After studying this module, we shall be able to know the meaning and ways of estimation of cost and benefits of the project, learn how cost and benefits of the project are estimated using profits, understand how cost and benefits of the projects are estimated using cash flows and appreciate additional aspect of capital budgeting decisions. In this module, we will discuss the determination of the cash flows of the project. The data for the computation of cash flow is provided by the Research and Development Marketing and Accounting Departments. The data is further processed to compute the cash flows. The cost and benefit of the project can be estimated on the basis of profit or cash flows. The amount of profit is calculated on the basis of accounting methods. The objective of financial management is to maximize the wealth of shareholders. Therefore, the appropriate amount is the profit after tax. Profit after tax can be easily computed from readily available accounting data in books of the firm. The relevant measure of estimating the cost and benefit of an investment proposal is to compute the cash flows. The amount of cash flows is computed on the basis of all cash revenues and expenses, ignoring all non-cash expenses. An investment proposal involves cash flow at three different points in time. The first cash flow at the time of making investment, which involves cash outflow, in terms of purchase price of machine and other equipment. The proposal will result in subsequent generation of revenue for the firm. Thus, it will involve the computation for annual cash flows for the life of the project. The final cash flow is terminal cash flow which occurs at the end of the life of the project. The terminal cash flow may involve the winding up of the project and realization of salvage value. These cash flows will make it different from the normal cash flows which occur at the end of the year. The first step for the computation of the cash flow is collection of the relevant data. This data is provided by the research and development, marketing and accounting department. This data is further processed to compute the cash flow which serves as the basis of estimating the cost and benefits of the project. The amount of profit is calculated on the basis of accounting methods. The objective of financial management is to maximize the wealth of shareholders. Therefore, the appropriate amount is the profit after tax, PAT. PAT can be easily computed from readily available accounting data in the books of the firm. The simplest way to compute the amount of profit after tax is as shown here. However, there are several reasons as to why PAT is not the appropriate measure of the cash flow in order to estimate the wealth of the shareholders. It fails to reflect the true cash position of the company. The amount of PAT includes non-cash expenses like depreciation, which does not involve any cash outflow. Amount of PAT will differ 
and can be manipulated depending using different accounting methods. The total amount of capital expenditure is not charged to the profits in the same year. Thus, we can state that the profits does not show the true picture of the financial position of the firm. Now, we will learn how to estimate the cost and benefits of the project using cash flows. While estimating the cost and the benefits of the project using cash flows, the relevant measure is to compute the cash flows. The amount of cash flows is computed on the basis of all cash revenues and expenses, ignoring all non cash expenses. An investment proposal involves cash flow at three points in time. The first cash flow is at the time of making investment which involves cash outflow in terms of purchase price of machine and other equipment. The proposal will result in subsequent generation of revenue for the firm. Thus, it will involve the computation for annual cash flows for the life of the project. The final cash flow is the terminal cash flow which occurs at the end of the life of the project. The terminal cash flow may involve the winding up of the project and the realization of the salvage value. We will start with the initial investment. It refers to the expenses incurred to start the work when a firms take up a new project. The first type of cash outflow which takes place at the beginning is the purchase price of the machine or any other asset. The other expenses in the form of installation of the machine and the transportation cost are also added to the cost of machine. In addition, in case of taking up a new project, it is also possible that the company now needs more cash. It is required to have more inventories etc. which can be clubbed together and termed as net working capital. Further, the salvage value of the old machine is subtracted to arrive at the amount required for the initial investment because the cash inflow arising due to the sale of old machine will provide the funds to the company. The cash flows rather than accounting profit is used for the investment decision process. We can arrive at PAT by deducting all cash expenses from the cash revenue and further taking into account the impact of depreciation by subtracting it. The presence of depreciation reduces the tax liability of the company. This reduction in tax liability is also known as depreciation tax shield, which is equal to the amount of depreciation DEP multiplied by the tax rate. This amount is added back to the amount of PAT to arrive at NCF. Additional working capital. In addition to the initial working capital, in case of taking up new project, it is also possible that the company now needs more cash. It is required to have more inventories etc. which can be clubbed together and termed as net working capital. This additional requirement of funds becomes the part of cost or the funds which are required to start the project. Let us see how does salvage value of existing machine impact the computation of net cash flows. This cash inflow arising due to sale of old machine will provide 
the funds to the company and its cash outflow requirement will decline. The book value of the machine is arrived at by deducting the amount of depreciation from the purchase price of old machine. The book value of old machine is compared with the salvage value of the machine. When the salvage value is more than the book value, it will result in capital gain. The appropriate tax rate is used on capital gain. This tax is then deducted from the salvage value amount to compute the net cash inflows due to sale of old machine. The process of computing initial investment can be shown by the table as shown here. This cost is compared with the benefits of the project which occur over a period of time. Therefore, once the amount of initial investment is known, the next step is to compute the subsequent annual cash flows associated with the project. Moving on, let us now discuss the annual net cash flows. The cash flows rather than accounting profit is used for the investment decision process. The simple way of computing the cash flow is to subtract the cash expenditure from cash revenues. Although the depreciation is the non-cash expenditure and as it should not be a part of the cash outflow. However, this approach will provide the incorrect amount of cash flows when earnings of the firm are subject to tax. When a company is liable to pay taxes, the amount of depreciation is deducted to arrive at the taxable income figure. It reduces the amount of tax liability of the company. This reduction in taxes due to the presence of depreciation is called depreciation tax shield. The amount of depreciation tax shield is equal to the amount of depreciation multiplied by the tax rate. The amount of net cash flow is arrived at by deducting all cash expenses from the cash revenue and further taking into account the impact of depreciation and the depreciation tax shield as shown in the table. If there is any change in working capital, the same has an impact on NCF and needs to be accounted for the computation of NCF. The increase in working capital due to new project in any of the year should be deducted from the cash flow of that year to arrive at the amount of the relevant cash flow. The net working capital is computed by deducting the amount of current liabilities from the current assets. Similarly, if any further capital expenditure is made in order to preserve or increase the productive capacity of the assets, it should be deducted from the cash flow of that year to derive the amount of net cash flow for that particular year. The next step is to calculate the terminal net cash flows. It can be computed by adding the net salvage value and the amount of working capital released to the NCF of the terminal year. The NCF of the terminal year has already been calculated in the previous step. Salvage value is the amount generated by disposing of the old assets at the end of its productive life. The tax on the capital gain is computed by comparing the salvage value with the book value. This amount of tax is then deducted from the salvage value to arrive at the net salvage value. It is assumed that the amount of the additional working capital which is required at the beginning of the project or as increase in any subsequent year is released at the terminal year due to the disposal of the old asset.
The first factor to be included in the terminal year is the normal annual cash flow as computed in the previous step. There are some additional cash flows which form the part of terminal cash flow. Now we would learn the meaning of salvage value. It is when the productive capacity of new machine is over at the end of this its productive life the asset is disposed of and the amount generated is added back to the cash flow amount. The tax on capital gain is computed by comparing the salvage value with the book value. This amount of tax is then deducted from the salvage value to arrive at the net salvage value. This net salvage value is added to the cash flow of the last year to compute the net cash flow of terminal year. Release of working capital. It is assumed that the amount of additional working capital which is required at the beginning of the project or as increased in any subsequent year is released at the terminal year. This amount is added back to the cash flow to compute NCF. The terminal net cash flow is equal to net cash flow plus salvage value plus release of working capital. Let us consider a simple example to understand this concept. The information as given in the table is available with respect to revenue and expenditure of X limited, wherein revenue is 30 lakhs, expenses are 10 lakhs, earnings before depreciation, interest and tax work out to be 20 lakhs. The depreciation is 12 lakhs 50,000 and earnings before interest and tax is 7 lakhs 50,000. Taxes are to be at the rate of 40% which means 3000. We are supposed to compute the net cash flows. Net cash flow can be calculated by using the formula NCF is equal to profit after tax plus depreciation minus change in working capital minus capital expenditure. Substituting the values we get PAT equal to 4,50,000 on further adding depreciation amount of 12,50,000 we get NCF amounting to 17 lakhs. This cash flow is the amount which is generated every year from the operations of the firm. This amount is computed in a way that is unaffected by the accounting policies and procedures. This is the net addition to the wealth of the shareholders every year. Let us now move on to the additional aspect of capital budgeting decisions. These additional factors can be easily incorporated into the computation of cash flows associated with the investment proposals. Sunk cost. Sunk cost is the cost which is incurred in the past and cannot be changed now. It is historical expenses which has already taken place. Suppose a firm purchased a land 10 years ago and the land is not used for any purpose and lying vacant. The cost of the land should not form part of the new project. When the land is used for the project because cost has already been incurred and if we deduct this cost from the new project, it may make the project unnecessarily less profitable. Opportunity cost. It is the benefit from the next best alternative. Suppose this land has alternative use that can be given on rent. This amount of rent is the loss in revenue which results when we use the land for the new project and this rent is not earned. And this loss in revenue is the result of taking up new project. It should be deducted from the revenues generated by the new project. Thus, all opportunity costs should be part of cash flow estimation analysis. Allocated overheads. A business concern usually has some fixed costs which cannot be assigned to any specific business unit. These are the costs which will be incurred irrespective of the production process. When a new machine is purchased or a new project is undertaken, these should be ignored 
and not be part of cash flow analysis. For example, suppose the allocated overheads are rupees 90,000 and the company has 9 machines. This cost is allocated to these costs equally and each machine is charged rupees 10,000. Suppose now the firm purchases a new machine and the number of machines increases to 10. Further, it is stated that the amount of rupees 9,000, which is 90,000 divided by 10, would be charged to each machine. Now, the question before us is whether this amount of rupees 9,000 should be taken into consideration while computing cash flows of the new machine. These allocated overheads would be incurred whether we purchase new machine or not. Hence, it should not be taken into consideration while estimating the cash flows of new machine. However, if it is stated that if we take up new machine, the amount of overheads will increase to let us say rupees 1,5,000. Under this situation, this additional amount of rupees 15,000 which is 1,5,000 minus 90,000 is taken as the cash outflow due to new machine. Marketing survey. When a firm undertakes a market survey, before launching a new product, it involves time and cost. At the time of assessing the cash flows of the new project, this marketing survey expenses should not be part of the cash flow analysis. This in expense is incurred in the past and cannot be changed whether we take up new project or not. Financial aspect of investment decisions. In terms of computation of net cash flows, it means that we should not take into consideration the payment of interest on debentures and dividend while estimating cash flows. When profit after tax is given, after considering the interest payment, the net cash flows are computed by making appropriate adjustments for interest payments. There are some additional factors that can be easily incorporated into the computation of the cash flows associated with the investment proposals. These are sunk costs, opportunity costs, allocated overheads, marketing surveys, and financing aspect of investment decisions. Sunk cost is the cost which is incurred in the past and cannot be changed now. It is the historical expenses which has already taken place. Suppose the firm purchased a land 10 years ago and the land is not used for any purpose and lying vacant. The cost of the land should not form the part of the new project. When the land is used for that project because cost has already incurred and if we deduct this cost from the new project, it may make the project unnecessarily less profitable. Opportunity cost. Opportunity cost is the benefit from the next best alternative. Suppose this land has alternate use that it can be given on the rent. This amount of the rent is the loss in revenue which results when we use the land for the new project and this rent is not earned. All opportunity cost should be a part of the cash flow estimation analysis. Allocated overheads. A business concern usually has some fixed cost which cannot be assigned to any specific business unit. These are the costs that will be incurred irrespective of the production process. When a new machine is purchased or a new project is undertaken, this should be ignored and not be part of the cash flow analysis. Marketing Survey When a firm undertakes a market survey before launching a new product, it involves time and cost. 
at the time of assessing the cash flows of the new project, this marketing survey expense should not be the part of the cash flow analysis. This expense is incurred in the past and cannot be changed whether we take up the new project or not. Financing aspect of investment decisions. We should not take into the consideration the payment of interest on debentures and dividend while estimating the cash flows. In this module, we have learnt that investment decision is made by the firms on the basis of relevant cash flows related to various proposals. The cost and the benefits of the project can be estimated on the basis of profit or cash flows. Further, we have also discussed some additional factors that should be taken into the consideration while computing cash flows of the project. Let us now recapitulate what we have learnt in this module. Investment decision is made by the firms on the basis of relevant cash flows related to various proposals. The cost and benefit of the project can be estimated on the basis of profit or cash flows. The amount of profit after tax is equal to revenue minus expenses minus depreciation and minus taxes. However, it suffers from several limitations such as it is calculated on the principle of accrual concept, includes non-cash expenses like depreciation, amount of PAT will differ and can be manipulated and total amount of capital expenditure is not charged to the profits in the same year. The relevant measure of estimating the cost and benefits of an investment proposal is to compute the cash flows. It involves cash flows at three points, initial investment, annual net cash flows and terminal net cash flow. Initial investment is equal to cost or purchase price of the asset plus installation expenses plus transport and other incidental expenses plus increase in working capital is added minus net salvage value of the old machine. Annual net cash flow is equal to PAT plus depreciation minus change in working capital minus capital expenditure. Terminal net cash flow is equal to annual net cash flow plus salvage value plus release of working capital. Additional aspect of capital budgeting decision includes consideration of some costs, opportunity cost, allocated overheads, marketing survey and financing aspect of investment decisions.